Basics is a proud collaboration between Sony Malaysia, Z, and Lens Library. Someone hands you a cutting-edge mirrorless camera that shoots some of the most amazing video, but all you've managed to do with it is get overwhelmed by all its bells and whistles. We're here to fix that. I'm Z, and this is Jace from Lens Library. Whoa, that's a lot of money. I mean, lenses. Lens, lens. Ask anyone how-to camera, and they'll tell you to start with exposure, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, but we're not going to start with a lecture on what each and every one of those things are. We're going to show you how each of these actually affect how your video looks. All of these three can be used to control how bright your video is, but changing each one of these settings comes with their own unique, let's just say, side effects. Changing the shutter speed affects how moving things appear on screen. It can go from being fluid, to sharp and choppy, quite literally how much motion blur there is. Changing the aperture will change how much your foreground and background get blurred out, basically how thin your focus is. This is called depth of field. And finally, changing your ISO directly affects how noisy your video looks. So it's incredibly simple. Shutter speed affects motion, aperture affects depth of field, and ISO affects image noise. So now you know what they do, here's how to actually control them. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. It's how much time each frame of your video gets exposed to the scene. Slow shutter speeds like a 30th of a second lets in more light and creates more motion blur. Fast shutter speeds like 2,000th of a second lets in less light with minimal motion blur. The problem with this is, video with too little or too much motion blur looks very unnatural. Fortunately, there is a very simple rule on what shutter speed to use so you get the most natural looking video. Just take whatever frame rate you're shooting at, double that number, and use that as your shutter speed. In our case, we're shooting at 24 frames per second, so we're using a shutter speed of 1 over 50, which is as close as we can get to 1 over 48. So that's what we're shooting on right now, and the motion looks very natural, just like how it would appear to your own eyes in real life. And just like our eyes as well, your camera lens also has an iris that changes size. If you set your aperture to something like f8 and look straight into your lens, you should be able to see the actual diaphragm itself. Those blades that open and close are what's controlling how much light passes through your lens. The size of that opening is expressed in f-stops. It's an inverse scale, so a small f number like f1.2 means a large physical opening, and a big number like f16 is a small opening. Wide apertures like f1.2 let in a lot of light, and everything that's not in focus gets beautifully blurred out. When you stop it down to something narrower, like f8, you get less of that effect. More of your scene falls within focus, and your image also gets darker. You can change the aperture by turning a dial on your camera, but on many G and G Master lenses, not this one, aha! You can turn a ring directly on the lens itself to change the aperture. If you do this while recording video, however, the clickiness of the ring might cause your camera to shake. The sun change in brightness can also look quite jarring on video, so if you're recording video, look for a switch on your lens that's labeled click. Push it to the off position so your aperture ring is now de-clicked and turns smoothly. This way, while you're recording, you can do very smooth exposure adjustments using the aperture ring, just like the cinema lenses used for high-budget productions. You don't talk much, do you? You didn't leave me a chance to speak! I'm terribly sorry, I get so carried away. Please, yes, please, yeah, please. Yeah. Fun fact! If you're looking for a brightest aperture among all Sony lenses, this is it. It's a 51.2G Master. Absolutely amazing for bokeh and low light. It is such oh, a great oh, tool. Oh, and speaking of low lights, when you increase the ISO value to make your image brighter, what it's doing is really amplifying that image signal. Almost forgot about that. When you boost a signal in any system, it introduces noise. But some cameras will give you less noise than others when pushed to high ISO values. The A7S Mark III and the FX3 from Sony Cinema Line are cameras that have a famous reputation for their really clean images at ridiculously high ISO values. So if you see yourself shooting plenty of low light, it pays off to pick a camera that's up for the task. Like we are shooting right now. Yeah, you want to yeah. talk about these cameras? No. 
But you'll also find one of the most common exposure tools built right into many Sony Alpha cameras. They're called zebras, like the animal. It's literally named after the animal. And you can enable them under the display menu on cameras like the A7C, or the dedicated sub-menu for zebras under the exposure tab on cameras like the A7S Mark III. The premise is incredibly simple. If you see these zebra stripes, that part of your image is too bright. You can customize how sensitive you want these zebras to be. I usually set mine at 100%, which means anything highlighted by the zebra stripes is most definitely already blown out. They're particularly useful when it's difficult to judge the image on your screen, like when you're shooting on the bright sun. But I wouldn't spend too much time worrying about getting a technically perfect exposure, because what if I told you there's no such thing as correct exposure? Sometimes we intentionally underexpose certain scenes to get a low-key look, and in some cases you might want to purposely overexpose a little if you're going for that dreamy, high-key look. So it really depends on what you're going for. Oh, come on, Jays, this is clearly not what we're going for. So try it out for yourself on your camera. Three things that control exposure, each does their own thing. And we'll see you on the next episode of Basics, where we'll be shooting some stunning slow motion video. That was lame, I'll never try that again. <laughs>